Hello, I'm Daniela, and welcome to Prompt 7 in the Stitch With Me in 2023 online workshop. As usual, all previous posts will be found below with different prompts for the months, January through today, as well as our link to our Facebook group, where you can post your work and your photos. You can join at any time throughout the year. This is an online workshop designed for you to go at your own pace. So let's get started with today's prompt. The prompt for July is game. Now game is a very fun prompt that has so many applications. It can be used as a verb, a noun. It can be a game piece. It can be a game you used to play. It can be made an imaginary game. You can do anything with this. I had a really fun memory that I wanted to share using an air hockey table. So let me show you how I did it. For the July prompt for game, well, I thought of a lot of games that I've enjoyed through the years, but one that is near and dear to me is air hockey. Growing up, my sisters and I had an air hockey table and we had spent hours playing that sound of the puck being hit by the little handles and the sinking into the goal. Oh, it's, it's just, it brings back so many great memories. So to that end, I sketched an air hockey table. Now, if you haven't played air hockey, it's a, just a tabletop game and you have these two little handles, one for each player, and your goal is to just hit the puck back and forth kind of like barbarians, but you can bounce it off the side and your goal is to get it past the person. They can't put their hands on the table, but they can use their handle to block the shots. The puck, however, is suspended by little air holes around the table. That's what those little dots are. There's the center point of the table where you start your rally and then you go down here. This is a little off. This has to actually come out further. and then the pocket, and that's what this thick line is, the pocket on each side. So I'll remove this line here, and I'm gonna try and recreate that with fabric and stitches. So I have my work cut out for me. I might modify it somewhat. It won't be highly realistic, but as long as I capture the essence, that's what I wanna do. So I'm gonna start with my background. I'm gonna use this muslin thread. This is gonna be a very stitch heavy piece. So I think I'm actually gonna double it. It'll give me just a little body to work with here. And I'll cut out my fabric. So that's looking pretty good. I'll set aside my card for now. Now I want to sketch out onto the fabric my design here. Because I don't want it to be quite as long as this, I think I'll just truncate it here. So you won't see this pocket. It'll just end here, three quarters of the view of the table. I'll start by sketching out the furthest pocket. So I'll make the end of the table. And then I'll have that pocket here and it's very narrow. It's just wide enough for the puck to go in and no wider. And then I want it to come out right off the card. Now the lines are gonna be the boundary lines, so I'm gonna make them in red. And I'm just gonna do stitches to, to that effect. And so from each pocket, there's like a little area that's off limits. And that's rounded, so I'm gonna create that half round. And I'll do that out of stitches as well. And then I have one line here. And then the center line of the table, which will be my main line. And in the center of that, there is a circle, and that's where you start your rally. I'll make that just a little bit smaller. So now we need to make the handles for each side. I'm gonna make those out of red fabric. I want them to be just maybe this high. They have a little knob that you hold on to. and then they come around. They're only about an inch or so deep. 
So I'll cut out two of those and use those on my table. And then I need the puck. I'll just sketch that puck here and then maybe do a satin stitch to fill that in. The last thing I need though are my little air symbols. So I think I'll do French knots right down the center of the table. I'll stitch a few, two to either side, and I'll place them on the table. So now I'll cut out my two handles here, just with fabric. And I'll stitch those lines down just to give it a little definition. So I have my two handles there. I'm going to just pin these in place. And the first thing I want to stitch is those handles down. So I have two strands of embroidery floss here, and I'm going to just stitch around that area that I sketched out. So I'll stitch around the perimeter and then stitch the definition. So I'll turn this to the side and do my stitches. And I'll do that for both of them. So I've stitched down the handles. I'm taking a permanent marker here. This is just a water-based marker. And I want to create a little shadow behind the handle of the handle and the front piece here, just to give it a little depth. This will not wear off when I use my iron to get rid of the marks that remain. My next step now is to take six strands of the red embroidery floss and I'm going to stitch the outlines. I'm going to outline the table and I'm going to use a split stitch and I'm going to outline the center line and then I'll come in here and do these lines. So I'll start right here. And I'm just gonna make a stitch. And then I'm gonna come up through that stitch. And it just splits the threads in half. And I'll make another stitch. And I'll follow all the lines that I sketched out for the border to do this. So my piece is coming along nicely. I have the outline stitched in, the lines, the center of the piece and the little handles. I want to work on that puck right now. I have two strands of embroidery floss. To make a beautiful satin stitch, you only want one or two strands. First thing I want to do though is stitch all the way around that circle, creating that shape. I'm going to just do a little back stitch. So I'll just make all these little stitches to finish this shape to give me a nice little outline. Then once I have that stitched close, I'm going to start my satin stitch. I'm going to start right here in this little opening. And I'm just going to bring my thread up and straight across. And I'm going to go right down, just right outside that boundary that I created. And then I'm going to come up right next to it. And I'm going towards the right just now. And I want to fill in with stitches that area. So it's going to look nice and smooth when it's complete. If I've, skipped, if I've skipped a space, I'll just come back in and fill it in. Now because I made that outline, it's a beautiful smooth effect and it gives me a nice boundary. And I use the same color of thread so it really helps to hide any little errors or spaces or gaps. And I'll just continue stitching this entire thing in this formation, going just to the outside of the boundary that I created, 
and creating these beautiful stitches. And it'll look nice and smooth when it's done. And there I have a beautiful satin stitch for the puck. I'll knot it off on the back. And then I'm gonna create another satin stitch just for this pocket. So I'll outline it with the blue thread and then fill it in. Now because I want this pocket to really stand out, I'm gonna use all six strands of embroidery floss. The result won't be as smooth as this little puck, but it will be very interesting, much thicker and chunkier. So I'm gonna start with my outline stitch. Again, just a back stitch outlining the entire area. And now I'm gonna stitch this closed. So I'll come up just above the area that I outlined and create stitches up and down, closing that gap. And I'll do this the length of this little pocket. So I have the pocket all filled in. And now I'm ready to start the long haul job of stitching these little dots with French knots. I have three strands of embroidery floss here to create those French knots. And I'll make the French knots at the back a little smaller than the ones up close. So I'll just take my thread, pull it through my fabric, wind it around my needle once, and then go back in the fabric, keeping it taut. So that's my first knot. I'll do rows of five. And if they're obstructed by these obstacles, I won't stitch the knot, but I'll just try and keep lines going. And on the, and as I get closer, I'll increase the number of winds around the needle. So for here, there's one wind, and then maybe over here, I'll start winding it twice and three times over here. So I've completed stitching it and I am very pleased with the results. The original sketch and the textile version. Now I just have to take my iron and press out any of the pen marks that remain. So you can see all my little removable pen marks made with my Frixian pen erased beautifully, but my marker remained, which is just what I wanted. I wanted it to look like it was a shadow. So now all I have left to do is add a few stitches to tack it to my card. So that's how I use the word game in my prompt for July. That air hockey table brought back so many memories. I can't wait to show it to my sisters to get their take on it as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And please consider joining my channel as a paid member. There's behind the scene footage, videos only for members, and a library full of art techniques. Thanks for joining me today.